Boise, Idaho, home of the 8th Annual MPC Computers Bowl, nestled in the front range of the Rocky Mountains. Fresno State, the kids from California enjoying some snow in Boise. And what else do you do during bowl week but go bowling? That's what the Virginia players did. And the fans from both schools have been enjoying the unseasonably warm weather in Boise. As two eight-win teams in Fresno and Virginia get ready to play for the first time in their history. Virginia and Fresno State in the MPC Computers Bowl. And welcome to beautiful Boise, Idaho. Virginia, the highest ranked team ever to play in this game, taking on a Fresno State team that has won five straight games and has been averaging during that stretch 56 points per game. University of Virginia out of the ACC are going for their second nine-win season in three years. Their first bowl game ever, remarkably, was back in 1984, and they've made it a habit of going to bowl games ever since. Fresno State trying for its third straight bowl win. They always love to take on BCS schools. They have won nine of their last 16 against teams from BCS conferences. All right, Michael, both of these teams have won eight games this year, but what do you think, what team wins today would it mean the most to if they win? I, I have to believe Virginia because they have a plan. They have a young football team. They have a lot of people coming back next year, and this will catapult them into the offseason and get them on track for the ACC title and hopefully a national title chance. As far as Fresno State goes, a sixth win continuously is going to help this program. They love to be in a BCS buster like you talked about, Pam, but it's a physical test. It's a measuring stick like you mentioned, and in 60 minutes we'll know the outcome. Yeah, Fresno is the blue play anybody, anytime, anywhere team. The third member of our team today is Heather Cox. Heather. Pam, thanks so much. Virginia's quarterback Marcus Hagan wears a gold key around his neck to remind himself that he controls his own destiny. And he's done just that. A year ago, he was returning kicks and was a wide right receiver. Now, he's the starting quarterback on the 18th ranked team in the country. He said the biggest adjustment a year ago, he had to know 5% of the playbook. Now, he has to know the entire thing. And just in this first year, there have been comparisons to Michael Vick. Hagan's response, you can't make any comparisons until I'm also making 100 million. Then he added, I don't think there'll ever be another Michael Vick. I hope I can just make a name of my own and that will be enough. And Pam, a win today could certainly get him on his way. Absolutely, Heather. Boy, you talk about being compared to Michael Vick. I mean, that's no pressure whatsoever. And Marcus is has fo has followed in the footsteps of a very good quarterback in Matt Shaw. And now he has taken over first year as a starter. Virginia won the toss and has elected to take the ball. The eighth annual MPC Computers Bowl is underway. Michael Johnson gets it for Virginia. And Johnson with a terrific opening kickoff return gets it all the way up to the 29 yard line. Marcus Hagens, Heather just touched on him. He was mostly as a slash player his first two years. Starting quarterback now has been a wide receiver and a punt returner. Was also a threat as a runner when he got the football. And the kind of guy, Mike, when the ball, whenever the ball is in his hands, he's dangerous. Extremely dangerous. He's going to have to be effective running the football today in order for them to be effective in the passing game because Fresno State's going to can these two running backs throughout the game. And number 18 is going to be pivotal with some bootlegs. Both of these teams run the ball well and a trick play right away. That's Bud Davis, a true freshman from Bowie, Maryland. And the kid from Bowie picks up a first down, 14 yards on the first play of the game. I'll tell you what, Pam, they, had, they could have taken this to the end zone. The receiver didn't do a good job setting up the block on the outside, but he had the whole perimeter and 60 yards in front of him to get in the end zone. That would enlighten this crowd the first play of the game. Great tackle by the Fresno State Bulldogs. But Davis now lined up wide to the left for the Cavaliers. One play, one first down. And absolutely nothing as Alvin Pierman is just pulled over. Now our Sonic starting lineups. You saw number 21, Alvin Pierman, part of the potent run game. Pierman has run for 100 yards in five of his last seven games. He has the most all-purpose yards in the ACC. And senior right guard Elton Brown has opened up the eyes of many NFL scouts. To Shaw Ferguson, a junior, one of the underclassmen that uh, there have been some rumblings about that he might be thinking about the NFL, but he has kind of put the kibosh on that this week. Pierman. Just a little bit of daylight, and the all-red-clad Bulldogs close that up in a hurry. 
Fresno defense has given up less than 20 points a game on the season. Tackle Garrett McIntyre has gone from walk-on to first-team all-whack. There are the linebackers as we look at the Sonic starting lineups. Riley, Andrews, and Goodwin, all of them from the state of California. Fresno's past events, one of the best in the nation, corner Richard Marshall has three interceptions, two of them. He's returned for touchdowns this season. Third and ten for the Cavaliers. We got a center that's limping out there. That's going to be pivotal for the quarterback center exchange. Hagan's back for his first pass, perhaps, but there he decides to throw it to Heath Miller, his all-world tight end. And if you're Fresno State, you can't leave that guy that open. Miller gets a big first down on third and ten, picking up 32 yards. And that's a knack he carries with them, the tight end. Sits, sits down nicely in his zone. He just flows with the quarterback. As Higgins rolls to his left, he has, just has this uncanny ability to find open area and yards after the catch. You better put a hat on number 89 and find out where he lines up in the field. Never leave him in space. And number 17 does that. McCulley challenges the quarterback, and the big play ensues after that. So Marcus Riley cheat up as well as Miller is the Mackey Award winner as the best tight end in the country this year. He's a junior. Pierman dives forward for a couple of yards for the Cavaliers. And one thing I've seen early, Pam, Fresno State's defense, linebackers are attacking the line of scrimmage. They're not even reading. They're attacking the running backs and forcing them to make a move initially. That's what Fresno State has to do continuously in order to, take the, to win at the line of scrimmage. Virginia offense averages 241 games, 241 yards a game, excuse me, on the ground. Two tight ends now in on second and eight. Higgins will play action. Going to the end zone, he has McGrew. McGrew had a step on his defender, Richard Marshall, but the pass was not there. You know, Higgins would love to have that pass back. A little bit more air, he could have had six points in the scoreboard. Inside position by McGrew helped that play out. He did his part, but it's up to the quarterback to go ahead and deliver the touchdown pass. Opportunities become very little down here in the red zone. McGrew is a big play receiver for Virginia. Four of his catches this year, four of his 26 catches for at least 20 yards, leads the team. Find out where number 89 is right here in the slot. You better get ahead on him. On third and eight. And they go over the middle. What a grab for the first down by Alvin Pierman. His 27th catch of the year is good for a first down. Nice job, nice patience by Marcus Hagens in the pocket. Knew exactly his primary receiver right here. Herman's going to come out underneath, but we're going to clear it out with a tight end. Once that happens, the middle of the field opens wide up. This reverse pivot, they call an angle route by the running back, a better ball location to allow Perriman to go ahead and get some more yards after the catch. Pierman, a senior from Charlotte, North Carolina. That versatility showing as that was a terrific grab for the first down. And they go right back to Pierman. And he somehow is able to use that burst of speed and get into the end zone for the touchdown. Alvin Pierman with a spectacular 13-yard scoring run. And the ball in the legs of number 21, Alvin Perman, set up the blockers nicely. That power G play, they, play, they pull the offside guard, he sets up his blockers and explodes into the end zone. Number 21, the senior, gets the Cavaliers in the end zone first. His last seven games, Pierman has been averaging 121 yards per game on the ground. The extra point by Connor Hughes is good. On Alvin Pierman, 13-yard run capping off a 71-yard drive. And for Pierman, 14 yards on that drive, 13 of them coming on a spectacular touchdown run. And right now sitting actually at 999 yards on the season. I prematurely gave him an extra yard, but I think he'll get it fairly soon. As Fresno gets the ball for the first time, Clifton Smith takes a knee as Kurt Smith, the kickoff specialist, just pounded it into the end zone. Paul Pinniger has had some ups and downs this season, but head coach Pat Hill says he's a winner, and he's following in the footsteps of Bulldog quarterbacks like David Carr and Trent Dilfer. So certainly quarterback you, but this year, Mike, they've really been running the ball a lot. They've been running the ball fantastically well the last five weeks of the season, but in order, when the running game goes well, the quarterback plays well. He's got 12 touchdown passes, only three interceptions in that five-game run. 
See what happens today. This defense is very stout for Virginia. He's got a tough challenge in front of him. Virginia playing a 3-4 defense, and their four linebackers are terrific, especially two of them in Brooks and Blackstock. And Bryson Sumlin, one of the two very good running backs, gets the first carry and gets six yards as we look at our Sonic starting lineups. Fresno does have that dynamic punch in the backfield. Bryson Sumlin has run for over 100 yards in three straight games, as has Wendell Mathis, who we will see later. And the Bulldogs offensive line might be its best ever left tackle. Logan Mankins has NFL written all over him, and the scouts have been really drooling over his potential. Uh, he's just a rancher, a road raider. Sumlin gets it and somehow is able to sneak through a pinhole sized hole and he picks up 16 yards and a first down. Kai Parra makes a stop, but Sumlin with some great effort. That's one thing I've noticed in the film. Sumlin does a great job, second effort, just finding holes in the defense and exploding. One thing about Fresno State, physically, they're gonna match Virginia at the line of scrimmage. They're gonna get stalemates and allow their running game to go ahead and get second effort and play to the whistle. Sumlin, Sumlin came into this game already over 1,000 yards at 1,008, the 12th Fresno player ever to break the 1,000-yard mark. First and 10 for the Bulldogs. And they go right back to Sumlin, but this time he is stacked up. Maybe picked up a yard, Chris Johnson. True freshman from Ivy, Virginia, making the stop. Going back to our Sonic starting lineups. Talked about the 3-4 that Virginia plays. Nose guard Andrew Hoffman to have quite a battle today with Bulldog center Kyle Young. Linebacker certainly the strength of this defense. Am Ahmad Brooks will be moved around. Look for him to be in different positions once the ball is snapped. And Marcus Week spent his first three years in Virginia as a tailback. The quick learner, a senior starting as a free safety. He's also a very good kick returner, the best probably in Virginia's history. And Here's our guy Brooks, 34. You gotta find out where he's on the field, where he lines up. Pinnegar with time, and he finds the open man for a first down. That's his leading receiver, Joe Fernandez. 10 yards and a first down for the Bulldogs. When the running game is going effectively, you're in a good rhythm. The quarterback is so relaxed in the pocket. He reached the coverage, went to his primary receiver. It becomes a very simple game to him. Middle part of the season, Pam, he was pressing. They talked about maybe giving another quarterback an opportunity, but he rebounded well. Nice completion in that thrown catch. Keeping our eye all day on where Ahmad Brooks, number 34, is when the play starts. And there he is that time. As someone picks up about two yards. Waku Robinson making the stop. Al Gro, the head coach at the University of Virginia, leaving the NFL to come back to his alma mater in his fourth season at Virginia. He was a defensive end and also a lacrosse player when he graduated from Virginia in 1967. And Pat Hill in his eighth year at Fresno. What a terrific job he has done as he takes his team to a bowl game for the sixth straight time. And they are certainly the team that will play anybody anywhere, anytime. Well, that Pat Hill looks like a true bulldog on that <laughs> sideline. He, he's representing that mascot well. Second down, handoff to Wendell Mathis. This is the other running back for Fresno that has had a terrific season. And Mathis picks up nine yards. Now, one thing that's impressive about Fresno State's offensive lines are coming off with a purpose, not just to run the football, but to explode at the point of attack and go ahead and get into the Virginia defense. Look at the explosion. There's two or three yards before the running back's even touched. Nice job at the point of attack on the left side by Wendell and Mankins, the left guard and left tackle. Mathis is uh, actually a transfer, played one year, 2002, at UCLA. He has played 10 games this year, 869 yards as you see coming in. And look at that average, 6.6 .6 per touch, fourth best in the entire nation. So boy, what a, what a potent one-two punch. Sumlin and Mathis between them have 15 rushing touchdowns as they measure to see if Mathis picked up the first down. Pac-10 officiating crew, a couple of chain links short. Man, we've seen a lot of tandem running backs first game of the year that Minnesota had two tremendous running back tandem, but these guys, Sumlin and Mathis, two juniors, and I think are gonna have a bright future ahead of them. And Pat Hill just loves to run the football. In the past years, the running game wasn't there, so he went ahead and just utilized his talent and threw the ball a lot more. But right now, they're so balanced at running the football. You see, the third down efficiency has been absolutely sick during that five-game winning streak for Pat Hill's club. 
And now on a third and couple of inches, Pinnegar sneaks it over easily for the first down. And you talk about the running game for Fresno State, Pat Hill, I mean, even more remarkable, Mike, because they lost a 1,000-yard rusher earlier in the season when Dwayne Wright went down with a hurt knee against Kansas State. That happened in the second game of the season, and as you mentioned, some of the math is they've just been monsters. And, and a lot of credit has to go not only to the offensive line, but the receivers down the field blocking. You know, to spring big plays, you got to have people working down the field all the way to the whistle, and Fresno State does it very well. Last three games, both of those guys have gone over 100 yards apiece. That is remarkable. Mathis stacked up Parham among those, and he might have gotten a couple of inches. Kai Parham, the sophomore from Virginia Beach, coming up with a hard hit. He is the prototypical 3-4 linebacker. Can explode at the point of impact, and Brooks set the whole play up. Ahmad Brooks, 34. Went ahead in the inside blitz here, and go ahead and, and freeze up number 44, Parkham, to come in there and unload on the running back, Mathis. Nice job by that inside blitz by the two in, inside defenders. Algro calls Parham the hammer, and he, sh he certainly showed the hammer that time. Pinnegar up top will slant pattern, and it is completed to Jermaine Jameson. Pinnegar with the pump fist, another first down for the Bulldogs and 13 more yards. Jermaine Jamison, their fine wide receiver, number six, lined up on the right side. Watch a stem inside. That's the most important thing because you give your quarterback a throwing lane. Once the throwing lane is established, accuracy comes pretty easy for the quarterback. But the receiver wins at the line of scrimmage and he gets the void in the secondary. First down. Jamison, also a good student, two time academic all wax selection. And Sumlin just balls over a Virginia defender. He just went right over Jermaine Hardy. And is going to be close to another first down. Well, number 36, Jermaine Hardy, he learned one thing there, that Sumlin, you got to bring a punch to him. You better lower your pad level, because Sumlin only stands 5'10", 200 pounds. Here's a strong safety, looking up a tailback. you got to bring it. When you don't wrap this guy, second effort's gonna allow him to get four or five yards, and Virginia's strength is right in the middle of the field with their nose tackle and two linebackers. Second and short. Someone is the tailback. A little play action. Pinner, we're going for the touchdown, and he has it! Perfectly thrown to Adam Jennings, and Fresno responds. Both teams scoring the first time they've gotten the ball. In a textbook drive, when you can take the ball and drive down 80 yards after your opposition scores, it's a momentum shift back to your team, Fresno State. The line of scrimmage made this play work. Why? Because you have the running game working effectively. And what happens after the running game? Play action pass, and Jennings gets the Bulldogs back in the football game. So Jennings with his fifth touchdown catch of the season. Fresno has now scored in 81 straight games. And Brett Vicentainer, the veteran place kicker, knocks home the extra point. Building in Boise, Idaho. Really one of the one of the neat cities. Beautiful setting here with the mountains surrounding Boise and the trademark blue field. The only blue field in college football. The NCAA has said that is it. No one else will be allowed to have either blue or purple or whatever. They gotta be green. Michael Johnson gets the kickoff for Virginia and his second straight good return this one even better as Michael Johnson gets it all the way up to the 48 yard line the kicker Brett Vicentainer came in to make the tackle there's a the Capitol building Boise the capital city of Idaho and the Christmas tree with 116 yellow ribbons that represents the 116th brigade from the Idaho National Guard recently sent over to serve in Iraq as the people of Boise pay tribute to the brave men and women who have gone over to the Middle East here. We've got a great offensive showing as Heath Miller, the All-American tight end, gets his second catch, good for eight yards. Let's go down to Heather Cox. Pam, earlier Mike was talking about Virginia center Zach Yarbrough limping a little bit. He did injure his right ankle. He has had it retaped. What's very interesting is his unique journey to the center position. His dad, Jim, of course, was in the NFL for 10 years with the Detroit Lions. 
He came to Virginia as a tight end, but wasn't very into it. Then became a long snapper, liked it because it didn't require a lot of time. Then against Florida State, they lost two centers in one game. Zach became that center and now loves being active in every play. And he was active in that one, helping to block for Alvin Pierman as Pierman breaks free for a huge gain. 17 yards, and now we can emphatically say that Pierman is over 1,000 yards on the season. And look at number 75, pull out and move. Well, he's pretty versatile, but he knows his limitations. He'll dunk it up inside, but the point of attack, Heath Miller got that corner for Pierman and allowed him to explode in the secondary. When you get that end man in the line of scrimmage pin, you're off to the races. Yardler, a second team all ACC selection this season for the Cavaliers. Jason Snelling, the fullback, his first carry, and he breaks it down all the way to the five-yard line. So this Virginia offensive line Jason opening up some, some daylight for the running backs. Well, he's averaging 6.8 yards a carry, and he only gets four or five nuggets, and that's one of the big ones for him. Jason Snelling, you see a blocker, bloodies his nose. This is uncharted waters for him, open territory going toward that end zone. That's the potency they have in that running game. It's only his 22nd carry of the season, and as you mentioned, Mike, he was averaging almost seven yards a carry coming in. That one was 21 yards. That helps that average. <laughs> Virginia inside 20, scoring 67% of the time. And Pierman this time goes down for a couple of yards of a loss. Marcus Riley, the freshman from Sacramento, number 31, making the stop. Well, that's what it takes when you get in the red zone. You gotta have linebackers attacking the line of scrimmage and don't allow that running back to make a second or third move. But the battle's right in the pit, Pam. I mean, these guys are blooding their noses, sweat's coming off their brow early. It's a beautiful day here in Boise. If you like the pit, the interior offense and defensive line, this is where it's at. So now second and goal for the Cavaliers. Hagens passing in the end zone. He has McGrew for the touchdown. Virginia, two for two on drives for scores as McGrew scores his second touchdown of the season. We saw Fresno State do the same thing when they scored their touchdown. They're running the ball effectively down the field. Virginia comes back, marches down the field with a big kickoff return. Again, Atlanta scrimmage. The offensive line keeps their helmets down to show run. And McGrew sneaks past the defender. Nice, easy throw and completion. It looks easy out there, Pam. I don't care if it's a blue field or not. These guys are doing a great job. Newfield has been kind to the offenses so far as Connor Hughes ties this game or gives Virginia the 14 to seven lead. Welcome back to the MPC Computers Bowl in Boise, Virginia, leading Fresno 14 to seven as we get ready to start the second quarter. Alvin Pierman has scored on a 13 yard touchdown. Michael McGrew has caught a pass. Adam Jennings has caught a pass from Paul Pinneger for Fresno's score. But right now we need the Fresno defense on third and 10, Fresno's defense looking for its first stop of Virginia. Hagens with time, flicks it out to Snelling, his fullback slips one tackle, and Snelling almost gets the first down on great second effort. Jason Snelling breaking through a tackle. Allen Goodwin able to get an ankle tackle on. You know, we talk about two running backs for Virginia, but Snelling's the guy that's the breakthrough game. He's the guy that had two big runs already, a nice reception, second effort. You never know what kind of opportunity you're going to get on game day, Pam. And when you get that opportunity, you make the most of it. And Snelling certainly has done that early part of this game. Virginia on fourth and one, going for it. They are seven for eight this season. That's 88%. Seven for eight, about as good as it gets. Wally Lundy is in the backfield, but they're throwing on fourth and one, and they make it. Hagen's able to find Fontel Mines. Mines a sophomore from Richmond, making only a sixth catch of the season. Left the maturity at the advancement of Marcus Higgins. Maybe earlier in the season on fourth and one, they would have never went to that pass, but now he's matured. Greatly as a junior, his first year starting, he's up over 63% completion percentage. You couldn't ask an easier throw and catch by the Cavaliers. And nice job by Rob Prince, the offensive coordinator, having the confidence in his quarterback. Mines expected big things from him. He missed five games out though after he hurt his uh, collarbone. That's one reason why he only has six catches this year. Mundy, Wally, stacked up at the line of scrimmage by this Bulldog defense. Well, Wally Lundy, number 33, is having a tough go of it. The other two running backs, Snelling and Beerman, are able to break through in the secondary. And Fresno State, 
has worked hard. They got to get a third down stop. You know, third down has been their inefficiency on defense. They haven't stopped Virginia at all today. And Virginia with two possessions in the first quarter scored on both of them. And right now, they're in good field position as we take a look at where Heath Miller is. But they go to Lundy, and this time some running room as he is neck tackled down after a four-yard gain by Dwayne Andrews. And Miller also not just, a, not just a catching tight end, but a blocking tight end. Yeah, he's the most ready, I think, underclassman to go to the NFL. Once he locks onto, he's got these big paws. You can't get off him. I don't care if you're a linebacker, you're a defensive tackle. That's what the next level people work for. You know, what kind of ability can you sustain a block with? Can you do it with just one second? Or can you go all the way through the whistle like Keith Miller did in that last play? 6'5", 255 pound junior. As Hagens rolls out, he has nothing but blue field in front of him for the Virginia touchdown. Eight yards in the score for the quarterback. Marcus Hagens runs it in. We talked about at the beginning of the broadcast, Pam, that Hagens has to be efficient running the football. They're going to be king on the running backs throughout the whole game. But nice job by Miller taking a defensive end down, allowing space in the outside. Hagens gets on the perimeter says, why not me? Number 18 can take this ball in the end zone. That's a nice job by that quarterback. Very efficient drive with great tempo. Hagens on the season, over 300 yards rushing, and again, he was a slash player his first couple of years at Virginia as Connor Hughes knocks home the extra point, and Virginia has extended its lead now to 21-7 over Fresno. Matheson Sumlin, the one-two punch. Now it's just Sumlin, and Sumlin takes it on his own and gets the first down. Up to around the 27-yard line before Jermaine Hardy corrals him for his fourth tackle of the day. 14 yards for Sumlin, who now has 69 yards on 13 carries. Like Mathis, Sumlin also is running a string of three straight 100-yard games. You know, Pam, we talked about Virginia's interior linebackers, but Fresno State's offense, offensive line got the best of those boys at that last draw play. First down as the clock ticks towards... 30 seconds, Sumlin again, and Fresno not in a great hurry now as he picks up six, and the timeout is called by Fresno State. That is their first, so they have two timeouts left with 26 seconds left to go. And Pat Hill's team, more of a much more of a running team this season with Sumlin and Mathis. No, Pat Hill does a great job on the West Coast getting prized athletes to commit to Fresno State. You know, everyone talks about USC being the perennial power here in the West Coast, but I think Fresno, Fresno State matches up personnel-wise equally with Virginia. You know, the output hasn't been that good in the scoreboard, but from a physical standpoint, Pam, I don't think they're outmatched at all. Two very similar teams. Let's take a look at Fresno State's season. They started out terrific. Uh, in a terrific way as they won their first three games at Washington, at Kansas State, and then beat Portland State, and then came the slip up, losing to Louisiana Tech, UTEP, and here at Boise, 33 to 16. But my goodness, five games since, not only five and all, but they have averaged 56 points a game. They put up 70 against Hawaii and 62 at San Jose State. Those wins were against, against SMU, Rice, Hawaii, Nevada, and San Jose State. Not a great schedule, but still 56 points in a scrimmage is good, much less a, a division. That's a spanking. Football. They put a spanking in those teams. Second and four for Fresno. Just seven points so far in this game. Pinnaker zips it and completes it for the first down into Virginia territory as Joe Fernandez had a, a drop earlier today, but that's a good catch and throw for 24 yards. I tell you what, they get points here before the half, and they get the ball in the ensuing second half kickoff extremely pivotal for fresno state to get some positive points out of this drive that's right as pinnaker kills the clock they will get the ball first in the second half paul pinnaker a junior out of woodland california and boy you talk about the quarterback traditions here david carr one of those guys who grew up around fresno state football always wanted to be a bulldog and fulfilled his dream and he's done some pretty good things so far in the uh, in the NFL, obviously, with the Houston Texans. A nice young man to come out of this program. First player picked a number of years ago, playing for the Texans, like you mentioned. They had three former quarterbacks from Fresno State starting NFL games yesterday, and did a nice job. Has been quarterback you. Pinnaker 
catches his own pass as it is just Jermaine Dias came in, the true freshman from Hackensack, spiked it right back into his midsection. You're going to see something. Talk about reactionary by the quarterback, Pinnegar. The ball comes back and is just knock it down, stop the clock. But your reactionary is an athlete. The first thing you want to do is catch the ball so nobody else does. Just a reactionary play by the quarterback. And I guess if he had a second opportunity, he would have just batted it down. So Dias with the big play as Fresno takes its second timeout, and with that catch, the ball now moved back to the 48-yard line. They lost 10 yards on that play. Now, if you're wondering about Brett Vicentaner and his range, his longest this year has been 45 yards. His career long, 47 yards. But in warm-ups, he was... He was banging him, wasn't he, Vicentaner? He certainly was, and I think right now the situation in the field, you're look, looking to get 10 yards. I'll cut to Fernandez or somebody, but you still have an opportunity. You won't be able to get the first down and stop the clock in, in seven seconds, or actually 10 seconds now they reset the clock. Vicentaner in warm-ups, kicking in this direction, was hit booming him from about 60 yards. He was kicking him up into the bleachers. This would be 65 right now. We're gonna give one more opportunity to get in field goal range, or they might even take a shot for the end zone, but we'll have to wait and see, and Pinnegar's doing a nice job just trying to get some positive out of this drive. Remember, Kurt Smith hit a 75-yarder earlier yeah. on a kickoff. It would have been a, a 75-yard field goal, hasn't made it. Virginia calls its Number first time. Well, uh, Al Groh with that, uh, that's, a, that's an Al Groh look. He's got the signature sweatshirt on. Guy who came back to his alma mater and uh, really has done a fantastic job and wanted and came in and, and said he talked about the plan that he had, Mike, as far as getting this team to contend. A lot of people thought they had a great chance, including me, winning the, the ACC this year and uh, faltered their three losses this season to Florida State, big, 36-3. to They also lost to Miami by 10 and at Virginia Tech to close out the season. Well, these last two games, you know, Miami and Virginia Tech, this team could be you know, 10 and one very easily and contend for the ACC, but they're gonna return 50% of their players are gonna be back next year. So I think he, he has a plan. You know, he preaches accountability and dependability and reliability. And I think that goes with that four year commitment by these student athletes to stay true to the program and get this program where it needs to be at top of the ACC. And he's compiled a staff that believes in the system, that believes in El Grohl. And that's all you can ask for from a head coach, where you can bring everyone together, everyone together, for one common goal, and that's to win a championship. And they are getting closer every year. Now third and 20 for Fresno State. Pressure coming. Pinnegar just gets it off in time, and it is complete to Adam Jennings. Boy, Fernandez was in the area. It's a good thing Fernandez didn't try to catch it. Fresno has to take a timeout because Jennings did not get out of bounds. But they pick up 16 yards, and Brett Bissentainer, who was hitting them from about 60 in warm-ups, is going to come out. Well, Virginia did bring pressure on that second down play, but Pinnaker gets rocked a little bit. Made the completion. He had two receivers out there in the same vicinity. But Jennings did a nice job making a reception and alertly one of the offensive guys called timeout to give him an opportunity to kick a field goal. So that was Joe Fernandez right there to call timeout. So this will be a 49-yard attempt by Brett Vicentaner. It would be a new career high. His old career high standing at 47. He is 9 of 13, 9 of 12 in his career from this from 40 to 49 yards 9 of 13 overall this season in field goal kicking this is the best drive they've established since that first drive of the game pam so they need some positive points because they will get the ball back to start the second half jordan christensen with the hold this container's kick plenty of leg and he knocks it home boy this container no problem whatsoever a new career long 49 yard field goal for this container and Fresno ends the half on an up note. Talk about positive points to end your drive right before half. Bring some momentum into the locker room. So a good recovery for this Fresno State team. 
Pat Hill oops it through. <laughs> This and Tanner gets it at 21 to 10. Let's go down to Heather Cox. And a huge lift with that field goal. Coach Hill, Virginia came out, scored three consecutive right. touchdowns. Since then, you forced three consecutive punts. What adjustments did you make defensively? Well, you know, we're just playing better. You know, we had a really nice, uh, I thought that P.I. call was bad, but that's part of the game. We've settled down. We've had poor field, field position. We've been on a long field. They've been on a short field. We get the ball first in the second half, and, uh, you know, we're right back in it at 21 to 10. You know, we, we've... Uh, Really been a little bit outplayed here in the first half, but you know we're we're in the game. We get the ball first in the second half, and we look forward to coming out and getting after this second half. This is a good football team we're playing. Your running back Wendell Mathis on the bench with an ankle injury. If he can't play in that second half, how does it affect the way that you play the game? Doesn't change it at all. Okay, coach, thanks. Good luck to you. You know, leading Fresno State by the score of 21 to 10, this eighth annual tilt on the blue field of Boise Pam Ward joined by Mike Tomzak and boy it looked like Virginia was just going to bowl over uh, Fresno State they scored in their first three possessions but the Fresno D tightened up they certainly tightened up and there was missed opportunities by Virginia they had a short field to work with and what happened was they need to get back to the physical game they need to pound people and they need to go ahead and get Pyramid run in the football game speaking of Alvin Pyramid he is a uh, well, what a terrific back he is he's gone over a thousand yards on the season that's a 13-yard touchdown run. Heath Miller, the best tight end in the country. Well, Heath Miller does a great job. He's got five receptions, and he's a guy that needs to pick it up in the second half, and Hagens needs to find him, find him in coverage and throw the football to him. But Hagens is a guy that makes things work because they run the ball well, and they have a nice controlled passing game. That was Hagens scoring on an eight-yard touchdown Martin run. Hagen's, Hagens also 12 of 20 passing. What does Al Groh think about things? Let's go now to Heather Cox. Coach, typically a run team, you had 20 pass plays, 20 rush plays in that first half. Will you strive for that same diversity in the second half? Uh, pretty similar. Um, I want to get a little bit more physical nature back in the game, so we're going to try to pound this thing a little bit more, but uh, we came to be wide open with it, use all the players that we have. Now we need our playmakers to step up and do a little more for us. In the second quarter, you had great field position, not a lot of points. How will you increase red zone production in the second half? Uh, well, part of it is what I just said. we got to be a little bit more physical. Uh, we've let the game kind of slow down into a run the plays game. Now we've got to turn it back into a game of toughness. Great. Right, thanks, Coach. Good luck to you. There you go. As you mentioned, Mike, they do want to get more physical here in the second half. And you see the average field position, Al Groh. Boy, they have really had the advantage on average starting from their 40, whereas Fresno has been backed up toward their 17 on average. Well, he's talking about his playmaker, and that's Pierman. Pierman and Miller are two guys that go ahead and make things happen for him. But, you know, physical play, they have the experience at the offensive line. Virginia does. But Fresno State has done a nice job matching strength for strength. Look how deep the returners are. Adam Jennings and Clifton Smith about five yards deep in the end zone. Oh, he's bringing it out. Adam Jennings is a daring guy. And it pays off as he picked up about four extra yards from the uh, where the touchback would have been. He's out to the 24, Jamal Jackson, making the special teams tackle as Paul Pinniger comes out in the first half. Pinniger, 11 of 17 for 88 yards and a touchdown. Well, he had a couple opportunities. There was at least one drop ball that I did see. Ferguson had a drop ball, but he missed somebody going to the post. He laid it up a little bit more air. Might have been a different ball game, but he hasn't struggled. He's impressed me a great deal. Wendell Mathis is on the sidelines. He sprained his ankle in the second quarter. He saw him a little quick cut. We are told that he's going to try to play. We'll keep an eye on that. But in the meantime, Pinnaker going up top, and that one goes right into the blue turf. Mark Wood, his tight end, the intended receiver. And there's Mathis. And this is surprising because, by tell you, when he hurt that ankle bike, it didn't look good. It didn't look good at all, Pam. And, you know, he really hasn't been up to speed today. He really hasn't gotten to a flow of things, and he's been the guy the last five weeks. He and Sumlin have done a tremendous job running the football, but Sumlin's the guy, number 34. Two carries for seven yards for Mathis. You see Sumlin well on his way to his fourth straight 100-yard rushing game for Fresno. Had 75 in the first half, and right now it's the Bryson Sumlin show with Mathis, at least for the time being, on the sideline. Play action. Pinnaker. Fires it and completes it to Fernandez for the first down. Joe Fernandez, his leading receiver on the season. That's Joe's third catch of the day, 12 yards and a first down. Well, Joe Fernandez does a good job with his burst going down the field, but this offensive line is doing a tremendous job protecting the quarterback and allows him time to go down the field. That left tackle, Mankins, number 74, is doing a good job in that left perimeter. 
But Pinnaker does a nice job finding an open receiver for a first down. And Joe Fernandez comes from pretty good stock. He's the son of former Raiders wide receiver Mervin Fernandez, just a sophomore. And boy, Fresno looking to pass early in the second half, but instead, Brennan Schmidt, the defensive end, trips up Pinnaker. Well, Brendan Schmidt, he's that overachiever, the guy that has that fifth gear. Just the guy that, you know, got his motor running all the time. Never say no kind of attitude. Just effort here. I mean, you get good per pass protection at the line of scrimmage. Five seconds, six seconds. Something's going to break down. The lineman can't do it for more than five or six seconds because there's too many good defenders on the other side of the ball. Schmidt, the defensive captain. He and Deprikashaw Ferguson, the offensive lineman, the only players to start every game over the last three seasons for Virginia. As Pinnegar up top, and that is incomplete as it goes off of the hands of Bryson Sumlin. Dangerous pass. There are a couple of Virginia defenders right there around Sumlin, including Kai Parham. Well, Paul Pinnegar has to hold that ball one more second and allow the receiver to come under control on that angle route. You see what happens when the ball is not accurately thrown. Missed opportunity for Virginia to get an interception there. And it's been an air-free football game. I don't think there's been a turnover at all in the first half. And very clean football game by both strong ball clubs. Yep, no turnovers, no fumbles of any kind. And you see the third down efficiency, which has been spectacular in the last in this five-game winning streak, way down today against this stout Virginia defense. Pinnegar up top and no as his intended receiver, Adam Jennings, stopped at the 45-yard line, and the ball sailed over his head. Well, communication problem between the receiver and quarterback, and at that point, going down the field 20 yards, the receiver's got to make a decision. He sat it down a little bit late. The quarterback thought he was going to go vertically down the field. Then brings up a fourth down for the punter, but Fresno State came out here and just let everything loose. Not one running play that whole sequence. And in the first half, they ran the ball 17 times, threw it 18. And this uh, punter, Mike Lingua, has been a little bit erratic today. It's been all or nothing, and that's more of a nothing. He either booms them or shanks them, and that was another shank. Two of former Governor Stunenberg across from the State House in Boise. Boise, the state capital of the great state of Idaho. And Wendell Mathis is indeed back. Twisted his ankle in the second quarter, but is back for the first time. And he gets the football and keeps his feet going. Tony Franklin coming up to make his second tackle of the game. And Mr. Mathis, number 22, did return to the lineup. We thought he was going to be able to make it in the second half due to an ankle sprain, but pain threshold, tolerance, and he wants to be in this game. Not only do you put him on the field, but you get him the ball, first opportunity to see if he still has it in him. That right ankle again. We've already landed on it. Caused some pain inside that ankle, that right ankle. And coming back, it's 131 yards from 1,000 yards coming into this game. And he's picking up a chunk of it. Wendell Mathis all the way down to the 20-yard line. Marcus Weeks finally had to catch up with them. Oh, wow, 57 yards on a bum ankle. They run that power G play to the left side. They cave it in. Well, Mathis is getting secondary. If it wasn't for Marcus Weeks, a former running back last year for Virginia, went back into secondary and walked him down. But great blocks in the point of attack coming around the outside to fullback and the left guard. 57-yard run by Mathis. That's a career long. His previous career long was only 35. Wendell Mathis able to get the ball that time, but boy, Mathis, uh, what a terrific job for him. Well, he made an impact. Not only am I ready to play coach, but give me the football. I can go to distance, and it's interesting, Pam. Frank Signetti, the offensive coordinator for Fresno State, the first series, there wasn't one run. They had six opportunities, not one run. Now they're running the football three times in a row. 71 yards on the day for Mathis, so he's 60 yards away from 1,000 on the season. Bryson Sumlin has Brooks. checked in. Up, and the right guard jumped early. D'Artagnan Shack. That's the second time they've gotten for a false start today. Again, you drive deep in their territory. False start 
on the offense, number 50, five yard penalty, still second down. And having a conversation with those linemen over the years, Pam, you ask them what makes them jump. Well, how would you like to be 300 pounds and try to hold your stance a little bit? All of a sudden, someone makes a, just a slight sound. It's all that weight forward in your stance, and all of a sudden, you got to come out of it. Yeah, it's inertia, right? But, but if you're going to come off the ball, the ball starts, you might as well hit somebody. <laughs> Give me that little jerk and just stop and say, he can't catch me. Shaq, an honorable mention, all whack pick this season. Second false start of the game. Pinnaker going into the end zone for the touchdown. Pinnaker connects with Jermaine Jamison and Fresno is getting closer. Nice recognition by the quarterback, Paul Pinnaker. Got a great job on the outside, Jermaine Jamison beating one on one coverage over Marcus Hamilton. But nice job by the quarterback seeing man to man coverage. They bring a blitz inside. And Marcus Hamilton just got beat over the top. You know, Al Groh was talking about being more physical on offense. And I think Fresno State, with the combination of three big runs, has reestablished that line of scrimmage. Brett Vissentainer now gets Fresno to within four points of Virginia, which once led this game 21 to 7. And that was just some terrific touch by Pinnegar. And a great job by Jamison, who flat out beat Marcus Hamilton. His second catch of the day. And Fresno State, Paul Pinniger, well, they are just chipping away at this lead. And even though Virginia has had terrific field position all day, Fresno tightening up, and they're down by four. Alvin Pierman gets the kickoff on the one. And Pierman tripped up. Clifton Smith tripped him up. Let's go back to the touchdown, Mike. You're going to see an inside blitz here. So you got man coverage on the outside. Once that happens, the quarterback recognizes man-to-man -man coverage and gives his quarterback or gives the receiver an opportunity to catch the ball, put it out in front over the defender. And Jemison comes up with a big catch. But I'm going to go back to right before halftime. The three points they were able to get right before halftime to bring it 21-10. They score. Now it's 21-17. And Fresno State just made a huge pop on that kickoff coverage. Momentum shifted to the Bulldogs right now. And Brett Vicentainer booming home a 49-yard field goal to end the first half. And now Fresno with the touchdown down 21-17. The Virginia offense has been stagnant since scoring on its first three drives. And Hagens holds on to it, and it's picked off. A flag comes down late, but Tyrone Culver has it. And another flag comes in. Boy, a dangerous throw by Hagens, and Culver got it, but we have to check the flag. Might have had Lyman downfield, because Hagens was running out of the pocket for so long, and they thought he might go ahead and take off. But momentum has shifted definitely for Fresno State. The pace has picked up. And Al Groh again told Heather Cox right at halftime that he wanted to be more physical in this half. And coming out with that passing play. I know it can't be defensive holding. He's out of the pocket. And Pat Hill. Pass interference on the defense. Number 24 interfered with the receiver that was trying to get eligible for a pass. 15-yard penalty, automatic first down. Well, he laid on him when he was out of bounds. The receiver must have went out of bounds. But number 24, Richard Marshall, was called for that infraction. I mean, as Higgins breaks out here, breaking the perimeter, defenders just clamp on the receivers. But once the quarterback's out of the pocket, oh, he called it back here in the 30-yard line. Yeah. Marshall did have some contact. With that slight little push. Well, that's two pass interference penalties against Fresno State that have been iffy at best. The first one was a bad call. Let's take a look at it again in Marshall. It's not a smart play by Richard Marshall. I mean, the ball was he going towards the receiver. He was not throwing to him. He was out of the play anyway. Snelling, the fullback, picks up about four yards on first down. Marcus McCauley 
makes the tackle. Ron Prince, the offensive coordinator and line coach for Virginia, goes back to the two-back set to reestablish the line of scrimmage. We had so many momentum swings here in the last minute. Fresno State thought they had an interception. Virginia's going back to that two running back offense, going to pound it, and Snelling's the guy that's been successful today with that little fullback plunge. Ron Prince, second year as the uh, offensive coordinator of Virginia, his fourth year overall on the staff. Now second and five for UVA. And they are going back more to the run, but stacked up, Molly Lundy. Todd Garcia, the linebacker, coming up with another stop. So a third down coming up now for Virginia. One of our storylines going into the game plan, who's going to benefit more from a victory today, whether it be Fresno State or Virginia? We talked about Virginia's rise, trying to get to the ACC title and hopefully a national championship game, but Fresno State's come out here in the second half with an attitude and a chip on their shoulder. Not only do they want to represent the WAC well, but six games in a row for this ball club will be tremendous in the offseason for recruiting. Now on third and five for the Bulldogs. Defense. Higgins running out of the pocket. Good stutter step, and he picks up the first down and a whole lot more. Higgins with just one man to beat gets a downfield block by Tom Santi, and he is pushed out of bounds at the 18-yard line. 46 yards for the quarterback. Well, I know Fresno State's defense watched Higgins on film as we did this week. He's just so elusive, Pam. When you get your pad level down, you can split a double-team tackle. You got tight end Tom Santi working downfield for the quarterback. But he's so elusive and just a valuable asset, something you really can't teach a quarterback as a pocket passer. 63 yards on the ground for Hagens. He is Virginia's leading rusher today, better even than Pierman and Lundy, two very good running backs. Lundy in the backfield now as play is halted. Fresno State University, number one. First and 10 for the Cavaliers. Lundy gets the carry and picks up a couple of yards. Dwayne Andrews, the middle backer, making his fifth tackle of the day. Yeah, you might see Lundy for a while, Pam. Alvin Pierman, he got rocked a little bit. Not only did he get rocked in the ensuing kickoff after Fresno scored, but that non-interception, he took a pretty good blow to the head, and he's being attended to in the sideline. This guy's a warrior. If he's somewhat healthy, he'll be back in the field. Just a consummate worker in the weight room, classroom, just an all-American kind of kid. Senior playing his final collegiate game, graduated earlier this year. Did it in only seven semesters. So Lundy on the option pass going for McGrew in the end zone, and Lundy got popped. So both of their uh, running backs have taken a couple of hard licks in the last few plays. Well, that's Richard Marshall coming up the corner. He sees run, he's gonna force a play right away. You get right under their chin strap, that'll rock you a little bit, but when your head hits that blue turf, it'll rock you even more. So you have one running back who's hurt. Are you taking somewhat of a chance there of exposing Lundy, who is uh, your only other healthy running back? Well, you should have blocked that a little bit better. When the, tight, when the receiver released, the tight end let his man go. He got into the backfield, but the pace is picked up for Fresno State. They're matching Virginia with a punch in the mouth. Another timeout taken, this time by the Cavaliers. They see Virginia, the first three possessions were golden, then they struggled, but this drive, five plays, 62 yards, and remember, the interception that was negated by a pass interference penalty was on the first play of this drive. Hagen's trying to make something happen, going for Lundy, and that falls incomplete. Well, that last graphic oh, team told a story. The last four possessions, Fresno State has held them under 50 yards, and keep in mind, it's been a short field up until this last drive. So what the head coach was talking about, reestablish the line of scrimmage and capitalize on mistakes by Fresno State. Fresno State did a great job on third down getting off the field. Connor Hughes in to attempt his first field goal of the day. It is a 33-yarder. His season high is 50. And a flag is down as that ball literally flies over the bleachers and onto the track that surrounds the field at Bronco Stadium. Fresno State, one of the teams proficient in, in blocking kicks. Pac-10 officiating crew sorting things out. 
Oh, is that what it was? A vaulting penalty or something. The original flag on the field was for a leaping penalty on number one on the defense. However, number one also hit his teammate as well as the Virginia player at the same time. Therefore, by rule, there is no foul. Disregard the flag. Field goal is good. And that's that leaping penalty where you can't get a running start and then land on another player before uh, Hughes has pounded that one home. And Virginia extends its lead back to a touchdown at 24 to 17. And Virginia with this football team under Algro, who played both football and lacrosse at Virginia. And Fresno gets the ball back. Oh boy, Clifton Smith thought about it, but I think Adam Jennings was gonna tackle him if he went any farther, because he was about seven yards deep in the end zone as Kurt Smith continues to boom the kickoffs. Now the interception that was called back has cost Virginia the services of Alvin, Alvin Pierman. We'll go back to that play, and he just got popped. He got hit right in the midsection. It could be, a, you don't want to speculate, either a hyperextended knee or thigh bruise, but talk about a tough hombre. He's 21. Charlotte, North Carolina, playing in his final game. He's going to be versatile, Pam. They're going to miss him if he can't come back. Yeah, big time. He's their uh, punt returner, can catch the ball out of the backfield as well as throw as Mathis gets the carry. Let's go down to Heather Cox. Alvin Pierman, as you see him walking into the locker room, they has a, he has a right knee sprain. The training staff is working on fitting him with a knee brace. Now, don't forget, he did suffer a torn ACL in that 2002 season against Penn State, missed the last four games, then made an incredible recovery, got ready for that 2003 season. It's a knee injury that he doesn't care to discuss. We talked about it yesterday, and he said it's in the past. He's certainly hoping that he can return for action in the second half. Yeah, in the 2002 season, Heather, he played with a broken hand, so he is a tough guy. Mathis, who has come back from an ankle sprain, suffered in the first half, gets that carry and picks up two for Fresno as Pierman goes into the dressing room. Very dejected. I mean, it, talk about a guy that wants to be on the field. If he could play defense, I'm sure Coach Crow <laughs> would love to have him on the defensive side of the ball, but they need to make more players like him, both on and off the field. It doesn't look like he's going to make a quick return. First team all ACC went over 1,000 yards for the season in this game. Led the conference in all-purpose yards. He had 223 yards, a career high against Duke this season. Great, great player. Now third and three for the Fresno State offense. There's Ahmad Brooks up top. Let's see what kind of rush he's going to bring. But the matchup is down here between the right left tackle and Blackstock. Vinegar zips it. And it should be a first down, it is, to Adam Jennings, wide receiver who caught a touchdown pass on Fresno's very first drive of the game. That's Adam's fourth catch today. Yeah, you got a tremendous left tackle. Let's go back to the last pass protection. You young kids, watch this left tackle right here. Big Logan Mankins takes Blackstock, teaches him a lesson, just nullifies him. You get those paws on him, and that's just one example. He's been doing it all day. He has over 800 and some snaps, Pam, without a sack, and he missed all of 2003 with the thing, ACL injury. Yeah, the thing about Mankins, this is a guy who was barely recruited and was a walk-on at Fresno State, and now Pat Hill says he's the best offensive lineman he's ever coached. If Mathis picks up a couple on first down, maybe three or four. There is Mankins, and he is a senior, and, uh, boy, the NFL scouts are drooling over him. He gets, gets explosion. Look at his leverage. 6'4, 6'5. But he gets his pads down low. He's got a nice bend in his knees. And Blackstock, Daryl Blackstock, number one, has not one tackle today. He hasn't even showed up on the radar screen. And I'm sure Logan Mankins would like to keep it that way. And in case you're just joining us as a flag comes down, Daryl Blackstock wearing jersey number one, putting aside number 56, he says, for the rest of his career. Which. Full start on the offense, number 74 and 77. Five yard penalty, still second down. So they get Mankins and Ryan Wendell simultaneously, the left side of the line jumping. But again, Blackstock wearing number one because says he doesn't want to be, he wants to be number one. 56 was Lawrence Taylor, I'm number one. Well, he's just trying to register number one in his jersey with <laughs> yeah. a tackle. He'd be number zero right now for what he has done statistically at least. Let's watch this matchup right here. Left tackle. Right line, right outside linebacker. Second and 10 for Fresno, down by a touchdown. Harm was picked up on the blitz, but caught from behind. 
Chris Johnson, the true freshman from Ivy, Virginia, with the big hit as Pinnaker's pass falls incomplete. And that's one thing about this Virginia defense. If one guy can't do it on his own like Blackstock, you got guys in the interior defensive line. Parham does a nice job getting penetration. Dennis Haley, 45s around the quarterback. A Pinnaker, he took a shot there. Go ahead and give me some love. Slap it again. Chris Johnson taking over. We haven't talked about Chris Canny. He went out earlier in this season with a knee, effectively ending his career. Canty, another guy who uh, is uh, hopeful to get drafted in the National Football League. But Canty was a big loss in all ACC linemen. And Johnson filling in nicely as a true freshman. Pinnaker over the top and completes it to Joe Fernandez. Fernandez in front of Marcus Hamilton gets a first down. You know, Pettigrew did a nice job, patience in the pocket, but they're going to bring some heat here. They're going to bring everyone, they're going to bring eight guys and play coverage behind it, but poise in the pocket is the key. You know the blitz is coming. Be patient. you got inside leverage as a receiver, wide open middle of the field. A nice job by everyone in the blitz protection pickup. And if a team gets to you blitzing you, they're going to keep on doing it until you stop it. I'm sure Al Golden might call off the blitz for a while. Fourth catch of the day for Joe Fernandez, an honorable honorable mention all-whack player and an academic all-whack performer in the classroom. Mathis tests the left side of the offensive line and picks up about three on first down. Hardy and Hamilton making the stop for Virginia. Both of these teams are very proficient running the football. You know, Fresno State's got this game back into a position where they can manage it. You know, one touchdown ties the game up, but they feel they're in control. And they stopped them, allowed Virginia to get that field goal opportunity. They made it, but they responded extremely well in the second half with an attitude and a chip on their shoulder. 162 yards on the ground for a Fresno State offense. It averages 228 on the ground per game. Pinnaker back to Mathis. And Wendell Mathis continues to run strong and hard picks up another four or five yards Quaku robinson makes the stop the junior from brooklyn new york you know what, what happens the latter part of the season you know a lot of scouts are getting some visual game experience there's a lot of pro, pro scouts here and mackins putting on a show he's one of the finer left tackles pam that we've had this year just, just has good balance and when you get a guy that big the main thing is being on balance keeping your head up because your body goes where your head goes and a lot of linemen the first mistake they make is they put their head down and they go straight to the ground along with your body. Mackins at 6'4", 320, third and two, Sumlin is the tailback while Pinnaker ran into his fullback, Vircher, but still they were able to get the clean handoff to Sumlin. So some contact in the backfield, and it's a first down run for Sumlin. They talk about it being a 60-minute game, but you know, we're approaching the end of the third quarter, and I think Fresno State has reestablished themselves as a team that's going to come out and play the full 60 minutes. Fresno State has converted three straight third downs on this drive. They've gone 35 yards in nine plays. Almost five minutes of clock has been chewed up. We are inside a minute left to go in the third quarter. This is the eighth annual MPC Computers Bowl. Pinnaker going up top. Jameson already has one touchdown, and that is... Intercepted, but out of bounds. Caught out of bounds by Tony Franklin. I don't know, Pam. That was very close, and the official got turned around. He wasn't able to see the end of that play, but Tony Franklin, talk about making an adjustment out of football. He turns into a receiver at the end and gets his hips turned around. I tell you what, the official was out of position. He turned his back, and when he finally got back in balance, he wasn't able to get his eyes back down to the feet. Looked like he did get a foot in. Tony Franklin, you that's, see the sophomore from Cleveland. That's good ball skills right there, Pam. You just take off, you know where your receiver is, and go ahead and get the football. You have every right to it. But here's Mr. Brooks. We haven't seen him in a while. Maud Brooks, number 34, one of the best linebackers in the country, only a sophomore. Pinnaker, oh, that was close coverage. Yep, they do get the interference call as Sumlin over the back was Dennis Haley. Well, Dennis Haley was just out of position there and might have been better served just allowing him to make the catch and tackle him. They get him with a hold. 
Fresno continuing to battle back. Only on the defense. Ten yard penalty, previous spot, automatic first down. Yeah, we're so conditioned to hearing a number now, Pam. We're waiting for a number to be identify that penalty. Well, it looked like Carm might have been uh, wrapped up with somebody away from the ball. Of course, Pinninger wanted the interference call. He didn't get that, but he did get a hold. Good eyes, Pam. The tight end was going vertically, and Parham did grab him. So the holding call makes it first and 10. Now the 11th play of this drive. Virginia over its season average for penalties. Usually a very disciplined team under Al Groh as Mathis picks up five on first down. Franklin making the stop. And this is exactly what Fresno State wants to do. Frank Signetti, the offensive coordinator, likes balance in his offense. Al Groh's talking about reestablishing the line of scrimmage, being more physical. Well, Fresno State has the same mindset coming out here in the third quarter. As the third quarter is winding down to a close, Fresno at one point trailed 21 to 7 in this game, but they're going to start the fourth quarter only down a touchdown as we get a look at Frank Signetti. I think many guys with NFL experience around this Fresno staff. Pat Hill has his team in good shape. Quarter of a very entertaining game as we expect the Virginia and Fresno playing it close at 24 to 17. And boy, Fresno again down 21 to 7 at one point. They have now had the ball for four minutes more overall than Virginia, and they've already gone 50 yards in 11 plays on this drive. It looks like the guy that has to step up on defense. Hand off to Mathis, and he picks up a couple. Weeks making the stop. So you got a third and about three coming up for the Bulldogs. Pam, you kind of get the sense that Fresno State is extremely comfortable right now with where they're at going into the fourth quarter with an opportunity to win the football game. And Pat Hills preached that we win a lot of games in the fourth quarter, and it didn't have to happen that way for five weeks for them. They beat teams in the first quarter, blowing them out, but this is a game they have to win in the fourth quarter. Five-game winning streak. Fresno averaged 56 points a game. Averaged 56 points a game to 17 so far. Mathis on third down is stopped short. So what do you do now if you're Pat Hill? You need a touchdown to tie it. Well, you're in control of the line of scrimmage. I mean, I know Virginia defensively is very stout. But you're going to see a play-action pass here. They've been running the football, running the football. And if they are going to throw the football, it'll be Joe Fernandez. 84 has been the go-to guy all day. And they are going for it. Mathis goes out. Sumlin, who's a little bit bigger, more physical back, comes in. Quick snap. And they give it to the big guy, Sumlin, and he is able to step over some bodies to pick up the first down. So Fresno State, now seven for eight on the season, and four downs gets a huge one here. I tell you, they got a lot of confidence on number 77, Ryan Wendell, a true freshman. But good coaching, good philosophy. Get up there, set, hut. And the first sound, you come off the line of scrimmage, and the great advantage you have offensively is you know the snap count. The defense has got to hold their water, but nice job of coaching and executing by Fresno State. A good lead block there by the fullback, Rashawn Vircher as well. Mathis is back in as the tailback. Play action going for the big play to Mark Wood. And he is in. Fresno has scored on a 22 yard. I think it's the second TD, Pam. Mark Wood had one earlier, but they law you to sleep, Fresno does. They're in control. The, I'm sorry, it was their first touchdown reception by Mark Wood, but they law you to sleep with the running game. Pinnaker sees it free safety, comes off the free safety. No one covers him going vertically down the field. Well executed drive by the Bulldogs. That is Wood's second touchdown catch of the season and the first today. And Fresno has battled back from 14 points down. Brett Vicentaner to tie it. We saw a shot of Frank Signetti, the offensive coordinator. Does a nice job. Calling the plays up top, and the players in the field execute them very well. Flag comes down late after the extra point is made by Vicentaner. And the Fresno fans are fired up. And a personal foul called against Virginia. 
Maybe some frustration now for the Cavaliers. After the field goal, personal foul on the defense, number 98. That 15-yard penalty will be enforced on the kickoff. They get Kwaku Robinson for the penalty. And Fresno has tied up the MPC Computers Bowl. No longer used. This beautiful city in Idaho. Wally Lundy getting the carry, picks up a couple of yards. You know, Pam, we have an advantage. I've been watching this a whole game. You know, at first it was an offensive lineman, number 67 holding it up, then 76, then 78 holding it. I have no idea why an offensive lineman is holding a flag. That's why we have Heather Cox on the sidelines. Heather? Definitely a reward handed out by Al Grove. Before each game, he names a few players to lead the team out with that Virginia flag, and then they, of course, have the honor of holding it throughout the game. Right now, it's guard Marshall Asbury, and you've got to wonder if that right bicep's a little sore by now. It's been a long game. Yeah, that's the toughest part of the game for those guys, is that's a two-yard carry for Snelling, the fullback, and this Fresno State defense, man, they are uh, they're getting the crowd involved. Every college has tradition, and that's all part of tradition. Al Groves trying to give us ball club, and you work hard in practice, you get the chance to carry the flag with the flag bearer. And it's always a big guy, a lineman. And guys who don't play, yeah. usually. Because you, you, you would have retired you out, but it is an honor. Now third and five, boy, this is a huge third and five, and it'll shape up to be a terrific football game between Fresno and Virginia, and listen to the Fresno fans, many of them locals in Boise, who are WAC fans. Hagan sees an opening, and he'll get the first down easily. Marcus Hagans has had a couple of huge runs today, and that one is for, good for 21 yards and a big first down. He's been a difference maker, because Pyramid's out of the game, 21. I think that was a design quarterback draw. They sent three receivers out, and the backs just stayed in the backfield, but either he has great vision, Marcus Hagans, but he's been the difference maker, Pam. That's, a, that's probably his fourth big run he's had this afternoon. Remember, he had that 46-yarder earlier. That's five rushes now for 84 yards and a touchdown. He is the leading rusher today. And we talked about it in the open. In order for this team to have success, the quarterback has to get some yards going down the field running. Three tight ends in for Virginia, helping to block, and Wally Lundy gonna lose a half a yard or so. Jason Shirley and Dwayne Andrews making the stop for the Bulldogs. Fresno State and Virginia meeting for the first time in their football history as a WAC team and an ACC team going at it in the eighth annual MPC Computers Bowl, and we have had a terrific football game. Virginia scored touchdowns on its first three possessions, and since then, the Fresno defense has stiffened up. The Fresno offense has gotten itself in gear, and we have a tie game with 11 minutes left to go in the game. Who's, who's it mean more to, Pam, at this stage? You know, the victory. Fresno State, Virginia, we talked about it in the open. Still got some more storylines yet to be built. Virginia trying to win nine games for the second time in three years, and Hagans this time could not escape the grasp of Garrett McIntyre. Well, that's the first time he called Garrett's name today. He had one quarterback pressure, but Garrett McIntyre, the junior, just extra effort. Coming off the left side, a quarterback draw all the way. You gotta do a better job on uh, left guard making contact with the defender if you're gonna have a quarterback draw. They emptied the backfield with motion, there's a quarterback draw all the way for Hagans. And McIntyre, another one of these guys, a former walk-on, barely recruited out of high school. He was a linebacker in high school and has grown up to be a six foot three, 250 pound defensive tackle, only a junior in South Lake Tahoe, California. Hagans being pursued. And boy, was that whistle early. That whistle blew when Hagans was still about four or five yards inbounds. What the heck was that? Well, that was an inadvertent whistle. I mean, Hagans still had some jets in him, and he's been elusive enough to get out of tackles. But 47 from the backside, Claude Sanders. You know what? I don't mind that whistle when you're a quarterback because you're trying to slow everyone up and protect the quarterback, but he was getting close to the sideline. There's an opportunity where he could have gotten hurt if everyone... You can't, you can't blow the whistle when the guy's still in bounds, though, Mike, you quarterback apologist. I'm trying to protect <laughs> him from the booth up here. Please set the clock at 10 8 
Jay Strickerts from the Pac-10. There was a flag in the play, I guess. Okay. I don't know. If, no, it wasn't a flag. They picked it up. He ran out of bounds because he was out of the pocket. You, you, you still can't, you can't pull a whistle when the guy's still in bounds, man. Now, if you want to protect the quarterback, you can. Why not? Oh, my God. He's the only offensive weapon they have. He might as well protect him. <laughs> Spoken like a quarterback. Now third and 13 for Virginia. Hagan stepping up in the pocket, firing it. And Virginia says catch. And so do the officials. Wow, the Fresno guys thinking Bud Davis trapped it. He went down low to get it. Well, the middle of the field's open because they have man coverage. Bud Davis goes down, catches off his thigh pad. That's a good catch, but if you're Fresno State coaches, you might as well lobby for the incompletion. But you're not going to change the official minds. They're too... They're too up to the, up to date with what's going on in the field. And Bud Davis, the true freshman, that's his first catch ever in college, and that was a spectacular one. And how about a spectacular defensive play by Manuel Sanchez, who drops Lundy for a loss. Well, these linebackers didn't do much in the first half as far as tackles. Tyrone Culver and James Sanders got the bulk of the tackles, but these linebackers in the second half, they're the ones that are meeting the running backs on the other side of the line of scrimmage. And it's two plays ago, this is a catch, no catch, but it comes off his left knee. Nice job getting your hands underneath by a true freshman. That's a spectacular catch. Bud Davis, his first catch as a collegian, went to Eleanor Roosevelt High School, and is from Bowie, Maryland, in Prince George's County. And he went about 100 miles or so south to go to Charlottesville to go to school. Wally Lundy. Getting the carry, and in case you're just joining us and want to know where Alvin Pierman is, it's uh, Monday, Tuesday, makes the catch for four yards. Alvin Pierman hurt his knee earlier in this half and has not played. So Monday, who started the first few games of the season before giving way to the more versatile Pierman, he is the workhorse now. And he's yet to really get out in space or into the secondary next level. He's been a quarterback. Number 18, Marcus Hagans, has been doing it with his feet. But Fresno State, third down opportunities. He's trying to put the nail on this one. Third, third down of this drive. We have not heard from Heath Miller in a while. The all ACC, all American tight end. Oh, Hagen's almost tripped as he was dropping back. And now Hagen's floats it and completes it. They have converted three third downs on this drive. Hagan's floating it in to Michael McGrew for another first down. Well, two things happened here, Pam. Right before the ball was snapped, Zach Yarbrough got drilled by the nose tackle for Fresno State, Garrett McIntyre. But Hagan just stays alive. And when you float this pass, so many bad things can happen. Number 80, Michael McGrew does a nice job. Margin of error, so small. And quarterbacks get drilled. That's why you blow the whistle early, Pam. Protect him. Well, <laughs> <laughs> that was borderline. They, 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 Fresno might be fortunate they didn't get a penalty because that was a borderline late hit. But anyway, first and ten. They convert the third down. Here's Lundy. And Lundy, tackled down by Garrett McIntyre, picks up about five yards. Good drive here for Virginia. And I, I know, Pam, you said Heath Miller hasn't done much in the second half at all. He's coming out of the lineup right now. They're going to go to three wide receivers. But I know he's been nicked up a little bit throughout the season. It's a long year, and that guy takes care of his body as well as Alvin Perman. Only a junior, he's all everything when it comes to a tight end. Blocking, catching, tremendous hand-eye coordination. And we still have not received official word about Alvin Perman, who's in the locker room getting his right knee looked at. Hagans zips it, completes it. Good tackle, however. As McGrew goes down immediately, Richard Marshall wraps him and takes him down after a four-yard game. Well, that's what happens when you get off coverage on the outside. The quarterback doesn't even drop. He just takes one step, a gather step, ball location, right in his numbers. Nice open field tackle by Richard Marshall. Love that tackle. Instead of going in and hitting him, he wrapped his arms and took him down. And it seems to be a lost art in football. Good job by Marshall, who is, besides being a very good tackler, a very good lockdown corner. Very talented sophomore out of Los Angeles. Nice job by Virginia responding here. 
on this drive, converting on third down. Let's see if they can do it again, Mike, on third and two. Rundy got a big guy in front of him. Elton Brown clearing the way, and Rundy scores from 20 yards out. Rundy, Rundy, Rundy taking it in, and Virginia regains the lead. Well, Lundy had a little help. Now he's the offense converting on third down occasion. But Marcus Higgins lead his team down the field. Get your left guard, All-American Elton Brown, out in space. He can deliver a bowl, 338 pounds. You talk about hitting one of those thighs. That's about 120 yards, 120 pounds of thigh that defender tried to take out. Wally Lundy has now scored 22 touchdowns in his last 14 games. His 41 touchdowns now, a new modern-day school record for the University of Virginia. Seconds left and no more timeouts for Fresno. You know, it's interesting. Looking at Brooks there, his dad, as you mentioned, Pam, played for the Washington Redskins, and Fernandez, his dad, played for the Oakland Raiders, and got Howie Long's kid, Chris Long, that plays for Virginia. That second generation of players is starting to make their way through college football. Ahmad Brooks, again, graduated from high school in 2002, spent a semester at Hargrave Military Academy. So like Larry Fitzgerald, even though he's a true sophomore, he would have been out of school for three years when the NFL draft comes up. So he does have a decision to make. His dad, Perry, has told newspapers that his son will come back next year. And of course, Al Groh is hoping that's true. But what a player he is. He couldn't ask for a better football game. This could be the ball game right here, third and five. No timeouts left for the Bulldogs. Pinnegar looking in the short, actually threw it short, but that's a first down as Duncan Reed, his tight end, makes the catch. College football, so the clock stops to reset the clock, or to reset the chains, excuse me. So now first and goal. And Pinnegar kills the clock with the spike with yeah. 28 to go. I don't like that play at all. I like the, the first play, getting the first down. But why, you know, you got Virginia on their heels. You had a timeout. Why not call two plays in the huddle after you get the completion? Because you're forcing the issue here. I know Frank Signetti wants to have everything under control with his quarterback. But you had an opportunity. They had some misassignments in the secondary by Virginia there to take advantage. But margin of error, throwing the ball to the tight end was pivotal in that first down conversion. Second and goal from the three for Fresno State. They have no timeouts left. Al Groh needing a big goal line stand to come up with what would be his third goal win in a row. There's Brooks right there. Nobody in the middle of the field. Pinnegar in the end zone, just overthrowing his intended target. That's Jerron Fairman. And the fans screaming for an interference penalty, but it doesn't come. I thought it might have been more on the offensive receiver, Fairman. He pushed off Tony Franklin at the end of that play. But you spread everyone out, you got everyone compacted inside, and it comes into a one on one matchup on the perimeter. You know, I'm talking to defensive coordinators, everyone does their part. All 10 guys do their part, and you have one defensive back that either falls down. It turns the game around completely just on a thrown catch. University of Virginia, number two. Is that Elton Brown running off the field? 61? I thought Elton Brown was in there in that last sequence. I saw him running off the field. I guess Al Gross trying to take some pages from Bill Belichick and getting as many people to play on both sides of the ball. Brown, of course, the All-American right guard on offense for Virginia. This is our Capital One player of the game. We give the nod, a tough one, to Paul Pinnegert, who's thrown three touchdown passes and has been very efficient on offense. Wendell Mathis also has been terrific, as has Marcus Higgins for Virginia, but Paul Pinnegert gets the, gets the nod here as the Capital One player of the game. Well, there's another candidate right there. If it wasn't for his legs and his savviness in the open field, second half he's the one that had those four continuous third down conversions that allowed his team to go in for the lead and, and remember too they played the entire second half without Alvin Pierman their best weapon on offense so Higgins has had to had to do it all and he did it in the second half third and goal from the three no timeouts left you still have time to run the play they've been having good success 
and that counter guard pull, that power G pull with Mathis in the backfield. Someone's in there right now, but they, you still can't run the ball and come back and fourth down with a pass if you don't get in the end zone. Little play action. Pinnacle waiting, throwing, and they'll have one more play. Great coverage by the Virginia secondary, and now with 19 seconds left, the NBC computers ball comes down to one play. Well, these teams worked hard throughout training camp, spring ball, throughout their 11-game schedule, throughout the regular season, and it comes down to one play, Pam, to carry them into the offseason. And one of these teams, unfortunately, is going to lose this game. Fresno State. One for one on fourth down today. Matt Rivera is in a very good receiving running back. He's kept in for protection. Pinnegar looking in the end zone, and the ball is caught for the touchdown. Jerron Fairman on fourth down makes his first catch of the game, and it is huge. What, what Paul Pinnegar didn't do last play was stay alive in the pocket. On fourth down, you have no more downs. Quarterback. But he stays alive. He stays alive in the pocket, but our receiver goes down in the back of the end zone. And I think he stepped out of bounds and then came back inbounds. But Pinnaker stayed alive in the pocket. There he stumbles in the back line. And he's the first one that comes back in and catches the football. But McDonald, that was huge. Fourth touchdown pass of the day for Pinnaker. This container ties it up. Fresno State with yet another 80-yard drive. Unbelievable here in the fourth quarter. There's a lot of fight in this Bulldog ball club, and it starts right there with the head coach. It's a mindset. Anywhere, anytime, any place, and they've matched the physical physicality of Virginia. Came with a game-tying drive. But Fairman, I think he steps out of bounds with his left foot right there. And this back judge right here, he's got to be looking at something. And he comes back into the field of play and makes himself eligible. But professional football, he cannot come back in and be the first receiver to touch the ball. In college, he's eligible to come back in the field of play if he's either forced out or runs out of bounds. So a good headsy play by Jerron Fairman to stay alive on fourth down. Paul Pinnegar now with four touchdown passes to four different receivers, and that fan is absolutely right. The Motor City Bowl is coming up next, Toledo and Connecticut. So we are looking at overtime. Three receivers to the right of Marcus Hagens. Perhaps a little Hail Mary time. The play clock, though, winding down, just got it off. Hagens throws that one incomplete towards Bud Davis. So now six seconds left to go in the fourth quarter. Fresno State had that, their last drive, guys, was 83 yards, so three straight drives of at least 80 yards here in the second half for Fresno. I'm, I'm impressed with Paul Pinnegar right here, the junior. Struggled a little bit through the midway part of the season, but came back, keep his ball club in it in the second half, and fourth down, he stayed alive. And found Fairman in the end zone. Pat Hill says he loves him because he's a winner, and he's certainly played winning football today as Hagens again goes towards Davis. And that'll do it. Fresno wins the call. So Al Groh's team gets the opportunity first, and collegiate overtime rules so different from what you see in the NFL. You saw the coin toss. Each team will get one possession from the 25-yard line per overtime until a winner is decided. No game clock, but there is a play clock in effect. And starting with the third overtime, if you score a touchdown, you have to go for two-point conversions. We had a couple of uh, seven overtime games a few years ago, which are fun, but lengthy. 
so, we've uh, had our share of them this year, Pam. I think this is our fourth, fourth one, yeah. It's a, it's a crew. And you see, Virginia, these are all-time overtime records. Neither team has played overtime this year. Fresno last was in overtime in 2001. Virginia and Al Rowe in the 2003 season. Well, if you're Virginia, I'm looking at number 89, Heath Miller. He's been absent the whole second half, but when you got more time in the game in overtime, I'm going to find number 89. He's the first reading your progression normally. They've been out with they've been out with the services of Alvin Perlman, Perlman, who's been injured, like a knee injury. So Lundy's had to fill the void, but Higgins has been marvelous. He certainly has. And you mentioned Heath Miller. You get a look at number 89, All-American tight end, won the Mackey Award as the best tight end in the country. He had five catches in the first half. He has none. He's still the leading receiver with five catches for 66 yards, but he has zero in the second half. Lundy, a huge hole! Well, Lee Lundy gets the first down as he is tackled down at the nine-yard line by Tyrone Culver. Well, that's something that was missing in the second half, Pam. Get number 33 some action. They ran the same play Fresno State Rose, that power G play, pull offside guard, block everyone down on the point of attack. Where's Heath Miller? If he's not doing a catch in the ball, he's doing a pinning guys inside and allow Lundy to get up the field. Ryan Barthamus with a great block. And this time, not much for Lundy as Lewis Leonard gets him for his third tackle of the game. You know, we talked about storyline coming in as who's who's gonna benefit more from winning this game, Pam. We got 60 minutes plus some. But for Fresno State to match these guys, tie him going to overtime, it says a lot for this program. And what they've accomplished throughout their year, they don't want to go home losers. And I'm sure Virginia's traveled all the way from the East Coast. Al Gross said, my number one goal is to win this game, win this bowl game. And then we'll talk about whatever happens after that. He treats it as like the NFL, like a one-game playoff game. Huge. Hagans, can he do it again? No. Pursued and dropped. Todd Garcia and company drop him for a two-yard loss. And he is the leading rusher today. Alvin Pierman has not played at all in the second half because of a hurt knee. And the quarterback, Marcus Higgins, with 87 yards and a touchdown, has a 46-yard run today. But right now, third and goal from the nine for Virginia. This is our first overtime. I'm sure you're going to see a run-pass option from the quarterback. He's been their best weapon this second half. Incomplete, pushed out of bounds, and Virginia's going to have to try a field goal. Yeah, nobody was open that front side, but Marcus Higgins did a nice job creating something. But McGrew, tippy-toeing. Nice job by Marshall, pushing him out of bounds. A little different from the NFL rule in college, where they don't have the force out. You're either in or you're out in college, whether you're pushed or not. And that was an obvious incomplete pass. Connor Hughes is hit from 33. This is a 26-yarder to give Virginia the lead, and he punches it through. So Wally Lundy with a terrific start to this drive, but the Fresno defense clamped down, and Virginia is held to a field goal. First down in the first overtime for Fresno. Pinnaker going for his tight end, and he's got him. Steven Spock scores, and the game is over. Spock, who came into the season with only four catches, has two today, including the game winner in overtime. Well, Spock ran clear through the secondary. No one even touched him. Nice play action fake. Go ahead and get behind the defenders. The linebacker sucked up inside. And Pinnaker, all he had to do was just deliver it, try to make the completion. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. For more information, you can always log on to ESPN.com.